On January 6, 2022, marks one year since the attempted coup at our nation's capital. I am deeply grateful to the Capitol Police for their heroic acts on that dark day. The American people will always remember the sacrifices that they made to protect our democracy. But marking this date has another purpose, too. The January 6th insurrection made painfully clear that American democracy is seriously at risk. In November 2020, American citizens braved a deadly pandemic to cast their ballots. But following that election, the defeated president refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power. Instead, he falsely sowed doubt about the legitimacy of the election and inflamed his most dangerous supporters to attack this capital. His attempts to cling to power through lies and violence were a violation of his oath of office and a grave abuse of power that can never be tolerated in a free and democratic society. We mark this anniversary not only to reflect on that dereliction of duty, but also to call out the ongoing efforts to undermine our democracy. Threats to our democracy are not new. For years, in state after state, Republican legislatures have passed laws making it harder to vote, all on a purely partisan basis with simple majority votes. They have imposed strict voter ID requirements and purged voter rolls to disenfranchise minority voters. They have made it harder to vote by mail and to register to vote. They have gerrymandered districts for partisan political gains. Over the past year, these shameless efforts have become even more brazen. Just as the former president was clear that he wanted to overturn the results of the 2020 election, Trump and his allies are entirely transparent about their goal of overturning future elections. Today, Republican opponents of democracy are exploiting every possible avenue to allow their party to maintain control, even if that means overturning the will of the American people. Rather than putting a stop to these attacks on voting rights, the Supreme Court has enabled them. The Roberts Court gutted the core of the Voting Rights Act, which is why Republican legislatures right now can pass anti-voter laws with ease. Last year, they destroyed what was left of the country's landmark voting rights law, making it nearly impossible to block laws with racially discriminatory effects. They twice overturned key protections against dark money in our elections, and they gave a green light to partisan gerrymandering. The Senate must not turn a blind eye while the federal judiciary and state legislatures lead an all-out assault against free and fair elections in America. It's clear that Donald Trump's Republican Party is embracing an increasingly authoritarian movement. In, 2020, in 2006, the Voting Rights Act was reauthorized unanimously in the United States Senate. And yet today, only one Republican supports the Voting Rights Act, and none have endorsed the Freedom to Vote Act. The Senate filibuster means that Mitch McConnell gets a veto, and Congress cannot protect the sacred right to vote unless Republican politicians agree, all while they are actively undermining our democracy in state after state. My view on this is simple. We did not swear an oath to protect a procedural rule like the filibuster, which has been the tool of racial segregation and Jim Crow. No, we swore an oath to defend the Constitution. When the Senate rules stand in the way of voting rights legislation, then those Senate rules must change. A year after an insurrection at our nation's capital, we must do more than speak up about the importance of democracy. Now we must act. It is time to end the filibuster, time to protect voting rights, and time 
to defend our democracy. Mr. President, I wave.